She's gonna get this light out of the way. All right, let me just pin my. Hi, Steve. How are you? Thanks for joining. Okay. So happy you're here joining. Uh, so we're just gonna wait for more people to come through. So we're going to just talk a little bit about medical technology, what we do in the lab, who we are, how you can get involved, why you should even get tested, why you should bother. Um, yeah, thanks man for joining so early in and um, I hope this will be worth it for you. Hi Melissa, Hi. thanks for joining in, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm so happy you could make it, I think just seeing you has just made me a bit more relaxed. Um, I am a bit nervous, I must say it's a bit nerve-wracking, it's my very first live and I'm so happy that you're here to, you know, join me on this. And I mean, thanks for the comments and feel free to put in a question in there, just let me know what it is that you want to know more of. Um, so let's have fun, let's talk and see what, what this is all about and you know what, I just want to thank you for being here, you know, you could have been anywhere in the world but you decided to join me on this live today, even though I don't even know what I'm doing as yet, um, I did draft a little bit of um, structure for us, so I'm going to tell you just a little bit um, about what the lab is, what we do, who are medical technologists and how you can actually get in. Now then I'll tell you just a little bit about myself, who I am, where I come from, and why you actually should listen to me. <laughs> and yeah, the bonus for me would be to tell you what's actually happening in the diagnostics um, in relation to COVID-19 and what we are doing to actually handle the situation. All right. Hey, how are you doing? Good to see you. And thank you so much always for supporting me. I know you've always wanted me to do this and just... What we're gonna do now is making the lab fashionable you know i did try to dress up and prepare a little bit for you guys um yeah so feel free hi oh it's so good to see you thanks for joining in um so basically i was just telling them why we're actually here today feel free to drop in a question for me whenever um <laughs> Feel free, absolutely. So just a little bit why actually you should be here today. Uh, we are going to mix in a bit of Tuana, although so we have to mix it in a little bit. Mel, I hope you catch a word or two. I'll teach you after this, okay? <laughs> uh, all right, so let's do this quick. So the laboratory is one thing that people don't really know much about. Um, those that actually know think the only thing we do is HIV. Yes, we do HIV, but that's not the only test we do. We do so many things that, honestly, most people come to the lab referred by their doctors, and by that time, they're in hospital, they're sick, they don't even know um, what the tests are for, why they've been drawn. So I think it's good to know. Look, this is now a day, an age where everybody needs to know what's happening with their bloods, with their money, with their body. Everybody's so health conscious right now, but... Look, they take the blood and then what? You don't know where it's going, who's looking after it, whether the results are actually true or not, um, and actually who's in there. So it's good to know. I mean, some of these tests you can actually also do yourself. The most common one that ladies use is the pregnancy test. That's actually a lab test. So you have a point of care, a rapid one, and we have one that we actually do in the lab itself. Uh, and then I'll tell you just a little bit more about that also. A little bit about myself. Um, I'm Leah Kinaliseho Mulai from Marapiani in Pumalanga, South Africa. And wow, I actually grew up very energetic, kids at Sarafina, modern dancing, and all of that. I actually think I thought I was going to end up in arts and culture, but I was also a bit of a left brainer and 
um, an A student. You're coming out or oh, number one. But enough about that. So I actually went on to study medical technology. That's how I ended up as a medical technologist in the lab. Um, all you need to do is basically study science, um, life sciences, which was biology back in the day, and mathematics. You can apply at any one of the institutions, um, TUT, VUT, any one of the University of Technologies, uh, Devon Institute, um, you know, at any one of those EOTs you can do. The difference between the technicals and what they do in university is that technicals basically offer you practical work so as you as soon as you leave the university you'll actually be able to work in the lab and do all the things that they're doing what they do most hey Knox, how are you doing uh, i was just telling them how you actually get to apply and to be a medical technologist and work in the lab so once you actually study the science stream you go in and you go to an interview um you go through a whole process of acceptance they actually interview you because most people come in thinking that being a medical technologist means you're going to be a doctor working directly with patients and actually it's the complete opposite um sorry we don't we don't actually touch patients we don't work directly with patients we get their samples in whether it's blood whether it is urine urine or we call it urine um and stool is feces so we get hair samples and saliva and anything that comes from the body so biomedicals we actually deal more with human beings and veterinaries do um, animals so we are separated into two biomedical technologists are for humans so like yourself and the forensics do your cadavers and all those people that have passed away for investigations we do living actual patients so who can come into the lab is anyone that is even you as a normal person feeling well it's better to you to go in and get tested so you know what's happening with you um and the path for me you know i started off wanting to be a doctor because that's what everybody wants to do at some point when as soon as you have an interest in health you think you have to be a doctor um second choice most people go into nursing and the laboratory is usually one of those like who are those people you know, uh, so the way I found out about it was I went to a local hospital in Mamekage, uh, We actually in grade 11 did a two week called a fortnight um, career guidance. So what you did is you would go into a place where you want to work as and because I wanted to be a doctor at the time, I went into a hospital. And while I was in there, you know, I really didn't like what the doctors were doing. They were working long hours. They were crying when the patients died. It was actually very emotionally straining for them. For the GPs, all they did was, you know, work with fractures and it was a daily routine. It was almost kind of boring. And if you wanted the more exciting stuff, like you had to specialize, do about 10, 15 years for speciality for to deliver babies as a gynae or an ops or do surgery. I mean, they had to study a very long time. So one time when I was in there, there was a small little window and the guy behind it was wearing uh, a lab coat and no one was allowed to go in there no one and i was so intrigued i saw the different colors of the tubes that were in there and i wanted to be in i was so curious i'm like what are you guys doing and he was kind enough to tell me what it is that they studied and so i went in and one guy came in from uj actually university of johannesburg for career guidance while i was in matric and he was telling us what the course is and how to get in and you know what i was sold i immediately applied for biomedical technology and yeah i went in and the first day my goodness we have a course called introduction to medical technology where they tell us what it is the lecturer actually said to us look this is not a high paying job you're not gonna get paid millions you're not gonna be super rich and if you're not gonna do this because you love people because you want to help people you need to leave <laughs> True story, this guy called Temple picked up his bag and he walked out of class. He's like, I'm not going to sit here for nothing. He just literally left and he went to do chemical engineering. And I wonder where he is right now. Smart move. Um, you know what? There's really not a lot of money in, in medical technology. The basic, when you start actually getting out, you get paid like 6000 as a student. 
and you write a board exam which usually takes about four years for you to qualify and after qualifying you literally take home about eleven thousand twelve thousand and you have to like go up on there so i went about doing my btech and i actually now have a master's in medical technology i went to do so many things i was training i was lecturing and i went into the diagnostic side which is where i am now which is the really exciting part so this is where we bring in the machines that we test on the labs and we fix them we train the people on how to use them but the interesting thing and the reason i'm doing this today is that you know you have the power you need to know um, if your doctor goes and doesn't actually do a blood test that you want to be done you know there's dr google and you can get all this information on there but you need to have the power where you know why the test has been done why blood has been taken from you you already know so much everybody is so connected everybody knows what they have to do but you know you know what to eat you know how to dress you know how to do you know push-ups and all of those things but the one thing that you really need to know is know your numbers you know know your cholesterol know your heart attacks um markers know your your tumor markers do you have cancer do you i think the most important thing for me is that people should get screened i would advise that you get screening so that you know beforehand what may be wrong with you possibly hi kitty thank you so much for joining uh we're actually now talking about why you should be able to have your own power and be able to know what your test results are look you even also have the right to ask for for your results so sometimes the doctors take the blood and then they never get back to you if it comes out normal you need to know what your numbers are the nice thing is when you get tested now and there's actually nothing wrong with you the day you end up in hospital and i hope it doesn't happen the day you end up in hospital then they know what it is that they need to compare with it's easier when we have a history and we know oh this patient was like this before and now they're actually like this your treatment becomes much much easier we're able to spot what ailments you have at that time so it's, it's okay like for you guys if you are a male and you're over 40 i think all of you guys have been bombarded with information about prostate specific uh, antigens so do get your psa test done i know it's super scary but if you get tested immediately and you know you can actually get it treated and you can live a normal life so i would rather say get tested and get it over and done with so at the end of this i'll just give you a bonus as to what is actually happening now with COVID 19 what tests we have available and what algorithms are in there um so if you have a question just drop it in there and we'll talk a little bit more about it so what i wanted to just tell you is how do you get in how much do we get paid um yeah and i mean i've just answered a couple of questions oh the one question i had earlier uh, which was asked is how do you guys get to patients so there's different ways the patient can either come directly to the lab not all labs allow that and you can pay either by cash or any medical aid uh, and you can do any other test that you want some people usually want to also do dna testing to see uh, genetics to see if somebody's if the little son belongs to them or if they're the father of the child so you actually also can do that that is the genetic side of things we also do um reproductive so you can actually have your semen checked have your semen checked um see your spam count see you know how 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 agile are they are they moving right so you actually can also check for that you can check your 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 liver you can check your kidney anything you want in your body we can check and we can tell you whether it's fine or not i'd rather sit here and know that everything is fine um but because the kidney what happens especially that's an interesting case the kidney with kidney failure is that only by the time it reaches like 90 percent and it's gone only then you start showing some bit of signs and symptoms the kidney is so smart that it fixes itself so does the liver i know uh, breakdowns with alcohol and all of that we can actually see in the lab somebody that drinks a lot of alcohol uh, we actually can test for that and we can see it whether it's chemistry or hematology you know, so yesterday and the day before I was uh, taking you guys through a tour of the lab the first one was chemistry so chemistry is just general chemistry checking all the chemicals all the hormones um, for females for those that are trying to get pregnant we do test for that. We work very closely with um, fertility clinics. We work very closely with oncology 
uh, centers for those that have cancer um yeah so we do quite a lot of things if there's one that you are in particular interested in you'll just let me know in the comment and yeah so just to give you a bit of a picture now uh with COVID 19 and what's going on so there is a bit of an algorithm that we have to do so we do have a rule in and a rule out situation so those people that are taking priority right now is patients that are actually showing signs and symptoms of COVID 19 um the test that we do now is a pcr test it's done in molecular and that actually tests specifically for the virus itself so we take that's the one with the swab that goes down down your your, your nasal passage so that is a bit on the pricey side also so the demand is so high that they actually have to now reprioritize um, and then the next in line would be those that are referred to by doctors. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do next is check for immunoglobulins or how your body is responding. So we want to see, do you have a current infection or do you have a past infection? So we can actually check that with immunoglobulins called IgG and IgM. So that is something that at the moment we, there's a lot of these companies are producing reagents um, and calibrators and controls on an emergency basis only so hey Petunia, thank you so much for joining we're talking about COVID-19 a little bit just for now um, just to tell you what's going on with it at the moment so at, at right now so all of the diagnostic companies that produce these tests we are actually working actively everybody's using a specific mark on the virus to try and detect the so there's very little information known right now about the COVID-19 there is testing going on the reagents that are coming out now obviously should be used with precaution so if you test negative now or you test positive it's best to actually go in again hey hey it's best to go in again just to check that the first result might have not been incorrect usually we do have about 98% of results that should be correct and a certain percentage that we know are either false positive or false negative those are things that the labs will usually never tell you um there has been people who for example have been diagnosed with hiv and you've heard of those and they're not really hiv positive so that can happen for a number of reasons so you could find that the analyzer was having problems on that day or the controls were out on that day or the patients have actually been swapped around um you do from time to time because these things are done by people when a lab uh, sample comes in it is marked with a name and a form and all of that is captured and we have a requisition number so that barcode that we use if the swap the forms are swapped around and the numbers are swapped around that patient can get swapped around with another one so but there is actually measures behind the labs where they try not to have that happen so much it does happen at times you know it's it's you can always be 100 percent uh and that's the truth that the lab most likely will not share um why would we share that with you you obviously have to trust us 100 percent, but we do try by most um most of our uh by most effort to try and get you the right results if we have to repeat it we do repeat it and we will send an amended order with a big red sign saying order a uh, form amended report uh, you actually have to then phone the doctor to say oh oopsie this is what we did uh, just to correct because it happens that people can get tested um, and you get a false positive result and now you go into really a psychological trauma where you're being treated you are now placed on antiretrovirals for for absolutely no reason and the psychology of it is even more so labs have been sued before um hospitals have been sued doctors have been sued so everybody is taking extra measure at this point in time to make sure that the results that do go out are actually the correct result i think the sad thing with this job is that we get so connected to the patients yes we don't get to see them face to face but if you're in a hospital setting and the patient's blood keeps coming into you every day you can see their progress you can see whether they're getting better you can see whether they're getting worse some actually get discharged and then a week or two later they're back and you're like oh my goodness um so we do go through that trauma with them uh it's i think at that time it's very difficult it's quite different from the big lab i was showing you 
two days back and yesterday that is like fully automated you don't really get to see anything the tubes are moving on their own you only really get to work with the ones that are like this much so sometimes they send us very little blood or even baby uh, blood or an adult whose whose veins are so small it's difficult to get blood from them those ones it's really like you have to make magic and 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 try and see how you can get the results out there um but yeah otherwise you know what we we really do our level best to try and get everything out there all right so i'm just jumping a little bit here so back to COVID 19 because i just remembered i was trying to tell you something about those reagents right now we want to see the immune response so your white blood cells your fighting cells how exactly are they responding to the COVID 19 the test that we need to do now is uh, an immunoglobulin, either a total immunoglobulin or IgG and IgM. Those are just specific um, white cells that, that, that get produced in, in the blood. So when that actually responses, we can test that and we can see how much of it you have. Right now, the World Health Organization still doesn't have any reference ranges for us. So reference ranges is to say a normal population should have values between this much and that much and then if it's within it's normal if it's lower it's 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 negative if it's higher then it's it's more positive so we don't have those ranges right now every manufacturer is basically doing their own thing and they're sending through to fda most of them are going through um with an emergency approval and it get tested afterwards and they can either approve it at the end or they can actually recall so some of them have been recalled recently there's been tests that have been going out that are actually not uh, on a proper standard in terms of specificity and sensitivity of the test. So what that means is how little can it measure and, and can it measure specifically just for that COVID-19? Or will it measure influenza and SARS and all the uh, SARS-CoV-1? So we need a test that is so specific that it only tests and you are sure, sure, sure that there is no other virus that is being tested that mimics COVID-19. Um, At this point in time, they there really isn't a test that is 100%. Everybody's working out of emergency state. Everybody's trying to just push whatever they can to the market at this point. But testing has been done. Everybody has to get tested. Um, so right now we all struggling. All the companies are struggling to get the reagents into the country, especially South Africa because of the lockdown restrictions, um, South Africa was restricting um, America to ship to South Africa. So hopefully with now level four, and hopefully as it gets into level three, we will be able to get more tests that are actually more reliable, that right now, as soon as those agents can hit South Africa, you can actually go and get tested. There is still that level of priority that we need to do. Again, those that, are sim that have symptoms, have to do the PCR and molecular with the nose swab um, and they'll also do a blood test. So this one will be a lot easier. It will be a blood test uh, and you just see whether you have a current infection or whether you have a previous infection or whether you've been previously infected rather. So why we do that is so that we know how many people have had uh, exposure to the virus. Um, so that's really good for public health and epidemiology and stats. Right now, we have no cooking clue. We have no idea who's been infected, where, how many. The numbers that are on there is of people that are that have been tested. But there's millions of us who have not been tested, and we have no idea whether we actually have been um, exposed or not. Right. So, but that's basically what's the latest now on COVID nineteen in terms of what we in the lab can do. We can still do PCR. You can go to any one of your lab that is available locally but priority really goes to those with symptoms. If you are asymptomatic, you can just hold off, um, get advice from the, the national helplines that are available. Um, I mean, those are the best places to get regular updates and, and not have word of mouth go around. Um, you know, we don't want false information going around. The panic usually results in, in, in really major problems for us, especially in the labs. There's so many people getting tested right now. The labs are totally overwhelmed, very much overwhelmed. So if you guys can just stay home, be safe. We will try our level best to get everything in there. Uh, so what's going to happen now from next week, 
uh, we already have package insert available for COVID-19. So we will start training the labs on the COVID-19 reagents and calibrators and controls. So right now, actually, I've been studying it. I have to study it so that next week when the when the trainings have to happen, I will be giving the trainings on, on those for the labs. And we actually are bidding. At this point in time, we are bidding because we are multiple companies. We have to bid to the labs for them to decide which lab they uh, or which company they want to go with. We all have different tests for COVID-19 and price also matters. So these are quite pricey. So if you can actually get a rapid test, that's a lot cheaper. Um, but the ones in the lab are a lot more expensive. So if you if you can, my wish for us is that we can at some point all be able to do our own testing. Those tests are available. The thing is you need to know how to interpret them and we will be doing more of these lives so I can tell you exactly what it is, what your test mean at that time. Why does it look like that? Why do we test? You know, um, I think we at a time where it's better to know than not to know. Uh, ignorance is not bliss at all anymore. Um, you can't just sit there and say, I didn't know and I'd rather you know. We, we've seen the increase now with diabetes, you know, we used to see it in other places and we used to say, oh, it's a white people's disease or whatever. But now you see our grandfathers and even the people younger, much, much younger. There's actually two people in my family now that have diabetes. So as soon as you know that there's someone in your family who's pre-exposed, you also just want to get tested to see if, if you are not on the borderline of actually uh, getting diabetes. So you can actually manage it better. So what they do is they... They do have the injections and they have to eat right. Um, and I know I'm a bit biased, Mara. Like, diet, um, so you have to have lots of water, lots of greens, cut down on the meat, reduce the salt. And I'm like, how did they get it right? Um, but they basically, that's all you have to do. And, and let me know if there's anything else you really want to know. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today and we will be doing more of these so you get to see me in the lab so tomorrow sunday i will be in the lab and um, i'm going in for a pm service so the engineer will work on the machine and i have to come in and make sure and run controls and make sure that by the time they start running patient samples everything is a-okay so we really take care of patients blood we really take care of the machines that we test on because without us taking care of those and making sure that you get the best quality results you know there's, there's there's not much that can be done i mean the the lab i can tell you now you can go and even search on google 70 percent of the diagnostic that happens in the healthcare system happens because of the results from the lab so here's what that means you go to your doctor he can't just look at you and say i think you have this or i think you have that or i think you have this cancer or i think you have some of them they can test so that's why it's 70 percent. 30 percent they can say breathe and do this and they can touch you and do whatever else and they can tell you what's what they think is wrong with you but 70% of it has to be on paper so you know exactly what it is. So this phone is a bit loud. Um, I'm going to put it off. So 70% of that, you need to know exactly. Your doctor can't just, just be like, okay, I think you have this. So you have to get tested and you have to know exactly what the results are. Doctors rely 100% completely on the lab to be functional. So we have state samples. So state samples basically mean those are urgent. Those need to be done according to the doctor in 24 hours. But in the lab, that can be done in one hour, two hours max. Okay. So even though your doctor may say come back the next day or they will phone you whenever. If your lab is actually in the hospital and you are in the ER section or you're in ICU or wherever you are. For example, a hemoglobin test, we can have that out in less than five minutes. Like, we rush so much that th there's no time. There's no time. We really, I know there's a backlog in, 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 in some of the labs, especially the government labs. But I can tell you now, you will not wait 
forever and ever to get your results you will get your results in, in like a minute what takes long though is the dna tests those take much longer the metal tests also take long um drugs of abuse you know what you can get the one from the pharmacy or order one online you'll get the same results um, we do have ones that are obviously automated from the big big machines but those are really expensive so if you can um there is certain tests that you definitely can use a hundred percent from something that you can buy online or in the pharmacy or you know but there is others we really honestly once that point of care from the pharmacy is positive then you rather want to go to the doctor and get one done on the machine just to make sure you know i think google tends to exaggerate certain things dr google is great but dr google will show you like you know some really 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 exaggerated um symptoms or signs and symptoms so rather st stick talk to your doctor find out um if you want you can even ask me what test you want to do and we can talk about it so what we can do is as we continue doing the lives we can target every test every day we have a different test to talk about say we talk about psa tomorrow we talk about mm -hmm. prostate so you know when you go test get tested what is it about for naming when you have like menstrual cycles you you want to see sometimes you lose a lot of blood so you can actually go and get tested for uh, anemia and just make sure you know have your greens have your spinach have your liver so we work very closely also with nutritionists um we work very closely with fitness centers because once you get diagnosed and you probably have to lose weight um, because you have high cholesterol, you have to go to the gym, you have to get a nutritionist. So everyone in the health sector works together. So if you are pregnant and we have to check for things like syphilis, um, we have to check your hepatitis and all of those things. Those things are important, not just for you, but for your child also. So you can have like a stillborn child if you have been pre-exposed so to prevent those things rather get tested and make sure everything is a-okay with you um yeah and i hope this has really been helpful for you just so you know a little bit about us and if you know anyone like in matric there's two ways actually i forgot to tell you so you can either go to university the course has actually now changed from being a national diploma to an actual bachelor's degree it used to be a diploma now it's a degree not all uh, uot's have converted but most of them are converting tut has definitely converted um so you can actually go there there's another way to get in and this one has not really been spoken about so much the other way to get in is to have go directly into the lab so we have people that have left from metric they graduated grade 12 they are done and they come directly into the lab so we call those people technicians they do everything exactly medical technicians and medical technologists do exactly the same thing and then you also have your bsc students who now come also into the lab we call them medical um, scientists so we all work together but in terms of of ranking medical technologists are the ones that have uh, more priority in terms of getting hired and salaries and all of that but technicians, I can tell you now, if, if you look at it, uh, medical technologists will go to university for four years. This technician started here already. So by the time you actually graduate and go into the lab and spend another two years doing your, your board exam, by the end of that six years, the technician has six years experience, meaning they know exactly what to do in the lab way more than you do. Uh, and then they actually have to train you and show you how to do the things. So... If you really are coming from priority goes to underprivileged um, pe people so previously a disadvantage so for example if you really are struggling at this moment and you cannot afford university fees you can actually tell someone or DM me or call me let me know so we can arrange for these people to get space in the labs uh, it's not always easy but you can go in and it's not always a lot so you can 
probably earn about five six thousand and then it will keep going more and more and more as more the more you get qualified and with that you can also transition so once you have a couple of years as a technician you can also register as a medical technologist and actually study part-time so i think that's really a great route for someone who is in matric right now or who did matric last year and they have no idea what to do and they have a family to take care of so i'm more than willing to help anyone that is looking to do that and anytime if there's someone writing the board exam and they need help i'm also willing to help with that look we are really in a tough time right now and with the lockdown and everything happening people are losing their jobs if you have those qualifications you did science life sciences and mathematics really reach out um if you are here on this lab or you see it please just tell someone that we can actually help and we can try and get them in yes the labs have also cut down on the salaries and the hours and the overtime so we work throughout 24 7 365 we work on holidays we work on weekends we work night shift we are always on call it's really not an easy place to be in but if you have to feed your family it definitely can put food on the table so i'm reaching out if there's anyone that i can help please do um, help them get in touch with me and we can see what we can do to help families out there you know so thank you so much for joining this live it has actually went longer than i expected but um it's always great sharing this information with you just so that you know we are here to make the laboratory fashionable we are here to get you excited about getting tested and knowing your numbers and knowing your health and yeah so we will do this again tomorrow same time 5 p.m tomorrow as we talk about more things and later on because i will be in the lab i will be sure to go live and show you around a different part so the first part was chemistry then we did hematology so tomorrow we'll see maybe we'll do micro or serology or molecular let's see what which one we can do tomorrow it's fine all right thank you so much for joining and i love you guys so much i really it means so much to me i was actually so nervous at the beginning but once i saw you guys are on it really meant a lot to me so Thank you so much once again. Love you guys. Bye.